What's going on guys, it's your boy Ethan. Today we follow up part two of the first video that you saw. If you didn't watch it, click the link down in the description below. It's the one where I start off the Rampage week at Hustler, play 10, 20, 40, and I get whacked down like $25,000 and not amazing, but maybe I can battle back. I play like eight more hours after the stream. The game gets absolutely insane and crazy. So uh, this is a video you don't wanna miss out. So uh, that's where we're at right now. I'm down a lot and trying to crawl back post stream. There's some straddles, there's some big pots, and things just get ridiculous as the night progresses till like two in the morning or something crazy. So playing a pretty long session, 12, 14 hour long session. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Please hit that like button. It always means a lot. Honestly, the YouTube algorithm so far really hasn't been helping out my channel or other people's channels so far. So the view numbers have been down, unfortunately. So it'd mean a lot if you just hit that like button, comment something below, maybe it'll spice some things up, but always love making these videos for you guys, especially the higher stakes cash games and let's just get into the action all right i'm down twenty five thousand dollars but post stream action is just beginning and there's always more action here it seems like so let's start off hot with a good hand ace queen offsuit i'm on the forty dollar straddle margo first to act opens things up to 120 dollars and action folds around to me she has about a thousand dollars in her stack so give or take 25 big blinds and we're Back to tournament land, at 25 big blinds, ace queen offsuit is just going to be an easy all in. So I jam and she has a good hand. Pocket kings and makes the call. Oops, she wants to run it twice and I'm always happy to oblige. And the first run out comes brick city until the river ace. Wow, that is pretty nice to get bailed out. Nice to win the first one and I'm free rolling the second run out, but... It's a brick city run out for me. She wins the second board. I win the first board, which equates to a chop. So starting things off in the first hand off stream, friendly chop pot. Do you have what it takes to become a bet MGM champion? Starting September 15th, players in New Jersey, Michigan, and Pennsylvania will battle for a state-by-state -state supremacy in the bet MGM poker championships. Over $2 million is guaranteed throughout the entire series. Visit betmgm.com for the full series schedule and take your seat today. Check the link down in the description below if you qualify if you're in the states of New Jersey, Michigan, or Pennsylvania. Thanks to BetMGM for sponsoring this video. In the second spot, a pickup King Jack off suit on the button, playing seven handed. There is a low jack raise to $120. The cutoff makes the call, and I think I'm happy to call as well here with a playable hand. I'm in position and call, so three ways to a flop of jack, eight, eight, two spades. The low jack C bets $180 into two opponents. The cutoff makes the call, and is there merit to raising here with King Jack? Potentially, not sure how often either of these players are going to have an eight here, or maybe just a draw, but it seems easy enough to just make the call for 180. We're going to a turn which comes a four of spades, not the card I wanted to see as the spade draws get there. Action surprisingly checks to me. And I'm going to check this one back because I don't feel comfortable with my hand anymore. It's meh at the very least. Now going to a river which comes a 10 and action checks to me once again. How thin of a value bet can I make here now? It seems like when action checks all the way around on the turn and river, I could probably check. King Jack kind of is an in-between hand where it's a decent top pair. But what do I even get called by besides Queen Jack or Jack 9 is basically it? I don't know, but I'm going to try and I bet out $800, which is pretty darn big into the field. Just thought that my hand would be good and maybe people could think I'm bluffing. Anyways, the low jack makes the call pretty quickly and the other player folds. I show my hand and he has 10-9 of spades. Oh my God, what a monster flop for him. Immediately got there on the turn, had the open and straight flush draw too, which is really crazy. And yeah, back to my losing ways, I chip down a little bit with a pretty ambitious value bet on the river. The following hand we go over, gonna need some backstory before we go and dive into everything. I pick up ace queen offsuit in the hijack playing 10, 20, 40, and with a good hand, I raise it up to $120. The cutoff to my left, three bets to 320. And what's interesting now is that the button player, four bets to 10, 50. Action folds around to me and I have quite the decision. The history with the button player is that he just lost a 6K four bet all in versus pocket eights, okay? He just lost a massive hand 
where someone five bet all in preflop and this player called off and lost to pocket eights and the board was like ace queen jack high so clearly didn't have a good enough hand and maybe he just had like pocket sevens or pocket sixes so this is the immediate hand after losing six thousand dollars to pocket eights so maybe he's tilting I'm not really sure, but after a brutal session here so far, if you watched the live stream, I got crushed. So far, I'm still getting crushed post-stream. I'm in no mood to fold. Ace-Queen offsuit has some good removal to really strong hands. So uh, I take a look at everyone's stacks. The cutoff is about six to 7,000. The button has like 5,000. I'm going to commit it. Screw it. I-5 bet to 2,300. The cutoff quickly gets out of the way who 3-bet me. Thank goodness. I thought he would be the strongest person out of us three. And when the button six bet jams, well, I took this line to commit stacks. So here I am. I make the call, stick it in there with ace queen offsuit. Maybe this player could be light, but after a six bet, seems like he just might have a really good hand. And this player wants to run it twice. Okay, YOLO. He shows pocket kings. Oh, dear God. Bad read by me. Looks like his image paid off here. But when the flop comes, ace queen. Turn ace for the nut full house. Wow, this has been a brutal session so far, but I find a pretty big suck out here for a solid sized pot. Phew, all right. Sometimes you just get it in bad and you get a pile of chips pushed my way. $5,000 precisely in this exact moment. It's nice to suck out. It's nice to run good. And now I can't complain anymore about running bad. Like I said, post stream action gets off the rails because now there is an $80 straddle. Welcome to 10, 20, 40, 80. I'm in the small blind with ace three offsuit when action folds to me. I think this is a good enough hand to raise. Let's get involved. Let's battle. I raise it up to $400. The $40 straddle and the $80 straddle call. So we're going to go multi-way now to a flop out of position, which comes 7-4 deuce. I have a gut shot straight draw and one over card, but I don't think I'm going to hit this board ever. So I start off with a check. The $40 straddler bets out $300. The other player folds and onto me. All right, I have a gut shot straight draw. Sometimes, sometimes ace high just might be good. And I have equity to bank a straight. So let's make the call here. And the turn, bank five. Let's go. I have the second nuts here. And I am so committed to this hand. Unfortunately, I start with the check. And this player checks back. So not the action that I wanted to see. But now going to a river, which comes a three. All right, still any six is now the straight. I have still the second nuts, but it seems pretty unlikely that this player is going to have a six in his hand after checking back on the turn. So I'm just trying to get called light and I'm going to go for a crazy over bet. This is the same player that I just beat with ace queen. Maybe he's tilting once again. I jam, put them all in for about $5,000, pretty big over bets, but you know what? I get snapped off. Oh my God. What did he have? He has eight, six. Wow. Not only did he actually have a six for the nuts, he had the mega nuts with eight, six, the best straight possible. This, this did not work out. This, I didn't have to pay him off with just my ace. Didn't have to give him all the money. Although it was a little bit of a cooler with me hitting the straights. And you know what's even worse news? I did a very poor job of calculating how much he had in his stack. Instead of $5,000, he actually had $8,600. Oh my God, I am blind. I am bad at poker. I pay it off. I give it to him because I announced all in. And that's how much he had. $8,600 freaking dollars. What a disgusting overbet. What a dream spot for my opponents. And just after sucking out, I give him the money right back. Maybe now I can go back to complaining about running bad, but realistically, I'm, I think I'm just playing bad poker. All right, so you can say that things aren't going great. I'm stuck like a lot of money now at this point in a 10-20 game, but I pick up king-queen off suits and, you know, big things are happening in this hand because I'm in the big blind and I am not involved in the ridiculous shenanigans as the 80 and $160 straddle is on in this hand. <sighs> like I said, things have gone off the rails, clearly. Action folds around to the button player who raises it up to $400. He is one of the only players playing pretty deep so far at this table, about 20,000 behind and I cover him. So when the small blind folds, I think I have a good candidate to three bet here. So I three bet to 1600, four Xing his raise. Folds all the way around, all of the 10,000 straddlers on this table folds around and he decides to four bet 
to $4,200. Oh my God. Get to play a big one. Um, obviously, king, queen, like not the most comfortable spot to be in, but I'm stuck a pile. What's another $4,000 to add on to my tab of being stuck? So there's certainly also merit to five betting here, which is something I'd really thought about. But instead, I decided to just make the call. Let's battle it out to a flop of ace, king, deuce, all diamonds. I have a pair, I have no diamond in my hand. It's not a comfortable spot to be in, let's be honest here. I start off with a check to my opponent here and he bets out 2,200. A quarter sized bet, is there any merit to folding? For sure, I could already be drawing dead. He can have ace king a lot of the time. He can have aces, he can have kings. Maybe he has, I don't know, ace queen. Basically I'm drawing very slim too as well. But I'm a little stubborn and, you know, the theme is that I am stuck. So let's battle. I make the call for $2,200. Going out of position to a turn, which comes a king. Oh, my God. What a gin card to see. Now I, I went from a very uncomfortable spot to a rather comfortable one, to say the least. If he has ace king, then I deserve to lose all my money. But I start off with a check again and he bets small again for $4,200. Facing this small bet here, I am unsure whether there's any merit to raising at all. It seems rather unlikely because if I am raising, I'm only getting better to call here. Like I said, he has all the aces, the ace kings that beat me, and also flushes beat me as well, which may or may not be unlikely in a four bet pot. So with all of that said, I am playing out of position. It's a little tricky. I decided to just make the call for 4,000 to 4,200 total. And we're going to river dealer. No diamond, please. Brick, please. It comes the six of spades. Whew. All right. That is the brick that I wanted to see. And now I'm debating on what the best course of action is on this river card. Definitely think I could lead out and just get some small value from an ace. But if he goes all in, then I really won't feel comfortable about my lead. He has about $15,000 back in his stack. And it seems like an easy decision to just check call. So I decide to check. He quickly checks this one back. I show my hand and it's good. I win a massive pot. Definitely seems like I sucked out versus an ace or something like that. But it's nice to have this pot pushed my way. Let me know what you think about this play in the comments below. I certainly have mixed feelings, but sometimes you get rewarded by playing bad. And here we are scooping in the chips. One big hand gets followed up by another one. Strap in your seatbelts for this one because I have ace queen of hearts in the low jack and the 40 and $80 straddle is on. I raise things up to $200 and I get the button to three bet to 700. And you know what's more fun than a $700 three bet? It's the person directly next to act in the small blind four betting to 2000. Oh my God. New players have filled up the table and they're both playing about $20,000 deep. So ace queen suited. I think this hand is simply too good of a hand to pass up. If I had ace queen offsuit, I think my life is a little more difficult and would lean more towards a fold potentially, but I don't have an offsuit in this hand that's suited. I'm in here. I'm battling. Like I said, at least I'm in position of the four better. I make the call for 2000 and the button player calls as well. Over $6,000 into the middle already pre flop four bet pot multi-way everyone's playing deep and we see a flop of ace nine of eight two hearts wow gin flop for me top pair good kicker nut flush draw got the entire world going for me here the small blind starts off with a continuation bet of 2300 pretty sizable bet here it definitely seems like he's strong in my opinion when he's out of position Two other players in a four bet pot as either myself or the button can have a strong ace as well. So when he bets out this big, I am not going to be raising. I am not going to be folding, of course. I'm just going to make the call. And now when I call the 2300, now interesting development, the button raises to 6900. What? What is this raise? He just has a set or something like that? Who even knows? But what's tricky is that the small blind thinks about this spot forever. He is deep in the tank. Obviously, it's a very big spot. And while this 
small blind player is thinking about it. I'm trying to figure out what I want to do with my specific hand. And ultimately, I end up on the conclusion that no matter what in the hell happens, if the small blind player goes all in, I just don't think I'm ever allowed to fold. If he goes all in for 20k, I can't fold top pair, not flush draw, good kicker. If he has a set of nines or eights, which he probably won't have, I still have good equity with a not flush draw and maybe go runner runner full house. Who knows? But yeah, I'm not folding. Ultimately, what ends up happening is that the small blind actually folds. Okay, that makes it very, very interesting. And now when I look at the button stack, what's behind this basically $7,000 raise is that he has about 12K behind. Look, I'm playing out of position. And if I call, it's going to be a very awkward stack to pot ratio. And I have a hand that just wants to go all in anyways. So it's not a whole lot behind. I'm covering him. I go for it. I announce all in. It's a three bet shove of about $19,000 total. And he doesn't snap call and actually asks me if I have ace king. So that's amazing news at the very least. I know that ace queen might be chopping. And even if we are chopping, I'm free rolling the chop. End of the day, he says F it and sticks in a call. I show my hand immediately. It's a massive freaking pot, almost $50,000 into the middle. And he says to run it once. Here we go, running it once we go, turn, bink, I have the nuts, ship it. This player just mucks and ship the whole damn thing my way. I've played for almost 10 hours so far tonight, and this is what I get rewarded with, with all my patience, all my, you know, maybe I've played a little bit bad along the way, but regardless, this was a massive one, and I am unstuck for the entire day. I was stuck 25,000 after the stream, probably stuck a little bit more up until this point, and here we are winning it all back. This was a massive pot that I needed to win, and what's also crazy is that the small blind, and I talked about this hand after the fact, and he said he had ace-king offsuit with the king of hearts. So imagine what could have happened if the button calls, we see the magical turn that gives me the nuts, and maybe it could have been a three-way all-in. Who even knows? But I'm not one to complain. All the chips get pushed my way. It's quite the process to actually receive all the chips because of <laughs> just how big the stacks were. But I'm not one to complain. I do a little castle building exercise. And there's the chip stack, chip porn. I am back unstuck, baby. After the massive pot, I'm feeling good. And there's an $80 shot on. I have ace, 10 of spades, and low jack. I raise things up to $200. And there's a subscriber, Ronnie, who just joined the table, saying he's shot taking. He bought in for about $1,300 and goes all in for that amount in this specific hand. He goes all in for $1,350 total and action folds to me. We've talked before. He had some rapport before he sat down at the table. And I told him, I want to double him up. It's under 20 big blinds. And I ask if he wants action. I know he's probably raising and jamming a pretty strong range. But as someone who is relatively young, trying to take a shot in a pretty massive game with all the straddles going, I got to respect the gambles. So I got to help the cause as I see a little bit of myself in him taking a big shot at a big poker game. So I made the call assuming I'm dominated and I am. He has ace king and I call expecting to be beat and let's just run it out on one flop. I ended up turning an ace, but it doesn't matter because my suspicions were correct. He has ace king. I am dominated. I lose about $1,300 here, which all things considered with the $80 straddle on is not a huge game, but happy to double up a subscriber. So if you come to Hustler, come hang out. You just might get a double up if you support the channel. Let's go back to some real poker. Maybe another big hand will brew here. I pick up pocket nines in the small blind. When I said that the game's off the rails, we're playing 40, 80, 200 straddle on. So how ridiculous is this? Action folds to me in the small blind and I'm gonna raise to $700 because the stakes have clearly been bumped the hell up. Only the straddle makes the call. So we're going to a flop of jack seven deuce to clubs. I have middle pair basically and I'm out of position. So I start with a check. This player bets out $500, and given how the Knights have gone so far, he's been barreling relentlessly, betting a lot and often, so I decide to make the call here pretty standard so far. The turn comes the four of clubs. I check once again. The flush draw got there. I don't love it, but he bets out $1,200. All right, like I said, given this player's reputation, he's been blasting and barreling. I'm not going to go anywhere just yet. I'm going to have to hold on tight to my pocket nines. I call for another $1,200. 
That's basically the amount that I gave Ronnie. So let's try to win it all back here. The river is a queen of diamonds. That isn't fun. Another card over my pair, really uncomfortable. I check, praying to see a check back, and he does luckily. Maybe I can win as well. I show pocket nines, and he mucks. So a pile of chips once again gets pushed my way. Winning another big pot. Things are kind of getting ridiculous with a $200 straddle, and things don't change in one of the last hands of the night. The $80, $200 straddle is on once again, and I peel a good one in King Jack of Diamonds in the small blind. Action starts off with the cutoff player who limps for $200. The button folds and I'm not going to be playing for just 200. I'm going to bump up the price. I raise it up to $900. The $200 straddle, same player as last hand, seems like he may or may not be on a little bit of tilt, ends up making the call. The limper folds, so we're playing heads up once again. I'm out of position here to a good looking flop of Jack Six Deuce Rainbow. Like I said, I'm out of position. It's a dry flop. It's one that I won't connect on too often. So I start off with a check. He bets $600 and easy decision here. Raising seems like an overplay. I didn't check to fold, obviously, top pair. I make the call. Turn comes the nine of spades, bringing in a backdoor flush draw. I start off with a check once again to play in flow. He bets $1,200 and pretty easy call for the most part for $1,200. The pot is ballooning once again, you know, pots get pretty big when you have the $200 straddle on. So we're going to a river out of position and it's a 10. Ugh. Board is really connecting now. There's a bunch of straights on board, two pair combinations, and I start off with a check. Hoping and praying to not see a bet, but this opponent does. It is $1,800 to go, a relatively small amount, and I am going to have to think about this one for a while. The sizing seems super value heavy. There's maybe a chance to turn my hand into a bluff as I block king queen, but that's not super relevant, not super important. I throw that idea out the window immediately when I think about it, but basically it's either a call or a fold. Merits on a fold is that I lose to a lot, but merits on a call is that the price is just too good to let go. So screw it, I'm a sucker. I make the call with just one pair, kiss my $1,800 goodbye, expecting to lose, but he shows 10-5 of diamonds, rivering the 10, but knowing it wasn't good, and I win. Woo, that feels nice. A couple thousand dollars get shipped my way once again, and this is a pretty strong end to a long marathon session. Let's go over the numbers, go over everything in the outro. Okay, everyone, I just played 12 hours of poker. Five hours on stream, seven hours after the stream ended. It's 4.30 in the morning, I'm in my car right now, I don't really know where to do this outro, but I have some freaking news to report. <laughs> oh my fucking God. This was, uh, I, I don't play long, long sessions ever. If you look at my cash game videos, I'll play for like five hours maximum because I don't know, I just play for five hours maximum. That's the comfort zone. That's when I start to fade out. But um, I was stuck a lot on stream. I think the most I, ever, I was ever stuck was close to 25,000, which is crazy. I knew I was down a lot. Didn't know I was down that much. Uh, 23, 25,000. And then, uh, yeah, the stream ended. I was down. The game game continued the cap of the game got the fuck off so uh, i was i bought into the game for fifty thousand total won some massive pots this was an insane insane post stream but i'm really glad and proud of myself to be able to say that i cashed out for seventy three thousand one hundred and fifty freaking dollars which is a massive profit of 23,000. Good way to start off the week. I can't wait on stream, but I found a way to run good after the stream, got to capture the freaking massive pot that I was able to play and uh, run pretty pure after the stream, even after I played kind of silly with that ace three hand. But yeah, I'm just really happy. Uh, it's rare that I'm kind of like happy about, you know, how the session went. Obviously I won, but I'm kind of, it's rare to th say that I'm like kind of proud of, of being able to stick it out grind it through and uh variance ended up being on the right side for me when straddles got bigger the game got bigger cap got off 
And yeah, it's nice to grind. But tomorrow, next video, I'm back at Hustler. I have to go back in less than 12 hours to play a 5-5-100 game uncapped. The game's gonna play like 50-100 basically. And I'm looking forward to that. So I'm gonna get ready, gonna go to bed and uh, refresh for the next day because it's a whole week of cash game. Thank you so much for sticking to the end. This was an insane journey insane hands to play and uh i'm gonna i'm done talking because i'm gonna go play more cash in 12 hours see you guys next time peace